On February 15th, Borton, Volvo, and Polestar of Minneapolis hosted the monthly meetup of the Minnesota EV Owners Group. A good meeting, but a lot of people with questions and checking out the cars all at once. Since test drives at night are harder to see, Ross from Polestar was kind enough to let me come back the next day and drive both the XC40 Recharge from Volvo and the Polestar 2 with cameras in the car. After the Minnesota EV Owners event that night, I also got to see my first live Kia EV6, but I'll have much more on that vehicle in a future video, so subscribe so you don't miss that, or our upcoming road trip to Florida. But now let's get back to a first look and test drive of Volvo's all-electric XC40 Recharge, and then the Polestar 2, and, and compare them both. Now we've got the hood open, this plastic cover, and then like the Polestar, a pretty small frunk, but enough to put your charging cable in, or a couple little things. I don't know if this... Okay, you can take this little divider piece out, that'd give you a little more room. You might be able to smash a duffel bag in there, but you probably couldn't get a carry-on in there. Yeah, it's got the traditional car hood latch release. Charge port, pretty standard, CCS. It's like a little bit of ice got in there, but not a big deal. And that latch is pretty low, but good size opening. I'd say this is probably about as tall as the Model Y, but not as wide. And like the Polestar, there's a little bit of under trunk space there for the charger and jack kit. Ski pass through and cover up here. It does have the foot sensor, so you don't have to reach down to that little latch all the time and auto close. Back seat isn't terribly big. So a little snug back here, but not too bad. It's more comfortable than it looked before getting in. And the entry is a little narrow getting into the door. But once you're sitting here, it's fine. It doesn't, there's definitely more head height than the Polestar. So you don't feel quite so enclosed. And similar vents in the back here. Nice view with the sunroof, and it looks like it's got the retracting panel there, which is nice. You can close that up. This material is really nice, but I don't know how it would handle a lot of car seat use. Um, as far as, it seems like a material that you could kind of grind some things into, but otherwise, pretty nice. And from the back, here's what the dash looks like. Not 100% sold on that uh, silver checker that's more on the right-hand side. It's a good design choice, but I don't know if it works for everybody. It's not really to my taste. So here we are in the car. Some standard controls here on the wheel. Uh, nice that it shows your battery level right there and shows that it is a little frosty. Like I said in the back seat, I'm not 100% sold on that design detail but it's all right. I do like that they made a good, like a strong choice and it's not ho-hum. This screen is a little small, but seems pretty good. We had good voice detection when I was getting the run through, but it also couldn't necessarily find some things. It's pretty good if I go, hey Google, navigate to Duluth, Minnesota. Sure, Duluth. So here it's saying, hey, we're going to get there, but we're going to get there with zero, or really, we're not going to get there. So if we say at a charging stop, it gives us some options, and we would want to stop in the middle. It's saying, hey, we're gonna stop and charge there, but it wants to charge for five hours and 15 minutes. So that's not a fault of the car. That is a, a fault of Minnesota's feeble infrastructure 
when it comes to CCS right now. Let's cancel that. The, there is a faster charger in Moose Lake. Hey Google, navigate to Moose Lake Charging Station. Sure, Charge Point Charging Station. Okay, so there is a charge point there in Moose Lake, which is part of the way up. Uh, didn't see that come up in our options, but that at least has a 62 kilowatt hour charger, which is faster. And because we're at 58% uh, and it's cold, we'd probably need to charge before we leave to get up to that stop. But at least that's there and semi-fast. But the screen and navigation all seems pretty standard and easy to work with. It's got these tiles, maps, you can connect your phone and all that. If you want to get dig deep into the settings, there's all of this you can customize. So not bad, not a giant screen, but some people don't want a giant screen. These vents are a little funky, but uh, again, I like bold design choices. Uh, so even if they're not to my taste, uh, I like that they did that. Then there's also this home screen, which is nice, brings you right back up to your, your main options here. Audio and vent controls. There are a couple of features here that are missing that would be on the higher end version of this. Um, cup holders, center console, and a little, little garbage chute. And we've got some power outlets here down at the bottom by the wireless charging pad. And a little nook here by your side if you wanted to lose M&Ms or something. All in all, a comfortable place to be. So let's uh, get the camera set up and take a drive. It's very comfortable. As far as managing bumps, this road does have quite a few bumps. We did turn on one pedal driving, so it has some nice regen at low speeds. Let's just punch it. Nice immediate pickup. Quiet. It does, it, it feels a little floaty, but it's smooth, so put off the accelerator and come to a complete stop that's very nice uh, the power delivery putting your foot down obviously if you floor it we got a lot of nice acceleration there but if you don't floor it you have a nice feather I'm going a little jerky here as I figure out the level of regen. Handled a nice pothole there really well. Smooth ride. And you can just talk to the car. You know, it's got the, the Google Assistant built in and so uh, I can just say, hey Google, turn off the heated steering wheel. Sure, turning off the steering wheel heater. And it just does it, so that's nice. Handy voice commands. I just accelerated through kind of a, a little turn there. And there does seem to be a little bit of float. Again, it's, it's that comfort setting. Definitely you have power when you need it. I think if you were coming from a gas 
Volvo, you either wouldn't know the difference or or you'd be impressed at how fast it is. The steering wheel does get good and hot with the steering wheel heater on. The seating position's nice. I had to raise the seat up a little bit for, for my height comfort. Um, but there's enough width to the seat where it's comfortable. My leg is against this center console, but it doesn't feel like it's being pushed. The map in front of you here is nice and subtle, but it's a little low to raise the seat where I'm comfortable with where my shoulder is on the door. Then it looks like I'm really looking down to see this map, but it is nice. It's subtle, shows you right where you are, and obviously you can bring up your map there as well. I like the blind spot warning in the mirrors. That's a nice feature. I know a lot of cars have that, but it is nice. And if you go over the speed limit, you get a little warning flashing like, hey, you're over, which is similar to my car. I'm gonna get a U-turn in here and see how that feels. I really like the regen, how that's nice and strong all the way to a stop. I would say to me, this is a good balance. If you don't want everything to be on a touchscreen, this is a good balance. You have your map and stuff on these screens, but then you also have just the basics there and the screen isn't too invasive. So you don't have to do everything through that screen, but it's also helpful for the things you need. A lot of the new EVs have a screen that's gigantic and takes up the whole dash because, hey, we've got a screen, but then they also have this big spread of buttons and it's just a little too much of both worlds. Handled the U-turn really well. I wasn't going super fast, but it's felt planted. No worries of it rolling over or tipping. You know, that weight is nice and, and low. And here on the entrance ramp, I'm going a little fast intentionally just to get a feel for how it is. Plenty of power to get right where you need to be in traffic. And again, that low weight keeps it from feeling SUV-ish as you're turning. So here again. This is a fairly tight turn and obviously I don't want to push it, push it, but it's yeah, you can jump up to 70 pretty fast. You do hear some of the road noise in other vehicles, but it's very quiet from a wind noise standpoint. So I think if you are a current Volvo owner, you'd be very happy if you're looking for an EV version uh, to go to the XC40 Recharge. Nice over the railroad tracks, smooth, quiet, and they are going to release in the coming years some of the bigger Volvo vehicles as EVs as well. So a little weird for me getting used to the shifter being down here. Nice backup camera. That is a downside of the screen being small as it's a little tiny there, but it works. And press the button for park down there. So good drive, nice vehicle. Quiet, comfortable. If you're a Volvo owner, uh, you're gonna be really happy moving into this. This is kind of the view as you're driving. Obviously I'm in park now, but you know, your battery level is down and to the right. A lot of that stuff is handy to have on there. Your regen level on your left, and then acceleration, I believe, on your right. So that's nice to have, but also something you're gonna get used to as you drive the vehicle. Another nice feature I just realized as I was getting out of the XC40 recharge is that there's no power button. So you get out and you're just done. And I really like that. Not having to turn things on and turn them off when they can just tell. You do have a key fob that you keep in your pocket or purse and 
that just knows when you're there. For now, we're going to move on from the XC40 recharge and take a look at the Polestar 2, starting with some shots from the evening event. First, let's take a look at the frunk. We see very small space there, enough for a charging cable, and then in the top you can see the jack is fit into there as well. Normal door handles, so good for those who like something a little more traditional. Here we see a nice shot of the hatch open, normal CCS plug, just like the recharge. As we look at the nice opening for the back, there's not a ton of space back here, but you do have the ski pass through, the wide opening, and this little divider that has maybe grocery hooks or something, not sure what that is, but underneath we have a little under trunk space, but not much more than your charging cable could fit in there. And a power trunk closure. Looking in the back seats, we can see the center folds down and the seats obviously fold down. Those gold seat belts look fantastic against the black, but when I got in the back seat with the door closed, the left side of my head was touching the headliner, and I'm only about 5'10", so that's pretty tight, pretty cozy for adults. And looking from the back seat, we can see we have that little light pole star symbol on the ceiling, and then a decent look at the dash. And we can see nice with the black trim and that kind of silver material on the front. I think that'll look sharp in black. The center console's a little wide, and I'm not sure if it's a great use of space, but we'll get more into that into my test drive. Interestingly, for backseat passengers, when you flip open the center console, you see you get a second cup holder there that does not come out. If you wanted to use that second cup holder, as you flip that back, you can see the the top of the console is resting on my knee, which wouldn't be comfortable for backseat passengers. And getting into this other white Polestar here with the tan trim, or tan seats. Not crazy about how the gold looks with the tan, but again, that's a personal style. Got some wood grain cooking here. Last night I saw a black Polestar on the lot and that looked really, really sharp. So some fun designs there. I don't know if that means they're ventilated seats as well. We'll check that out. Both the Polestar and the Volvo come with a pretty standard key fob. Nothing really exciting about it, but it does the job and easy to throw in a purse and see what the functions are there. Didn't notice this last night, but there is a, a seam here, which seems like an odd place to have an open seam rest your hand there you're going to feel that all the time which is a little bit odd here you can see kind of the dash material is almost like a houndstooth vibe the shift handle and those rear vents are all going to seem very familiar from the volvo the screen is a decent size it feels a little like it's just set there but coming from a tesla i can't complain about that and then there is wireless charging down here. It looks like a couple of ports for charging as well. USB-C there. But this is at a pretty narrow or a pretty steep slope. So a little odd, but if it keeps people off their phone while they're driving, then I'm all for it. You also have seat controls, which are easy to pop on and off. Set the levels you want, and then drop that back down. And here you can see we have the ventilated seats too, which I'm not going to turn those on with the heat. But uh, instantly I got a little feeling of cool there, so that happened really fast. Fan speed brings up that menu. So really pretty intuitive interface i'm really impressed with that so i like that there's enough on the screen to give you the basics but it's not so cluttered that you can't find your way around if you want to dig into menus you can but you don't have to now the yellow seat belts are a cool fun feature but i also feel like they would get super dirty after six months and you'd constantly be trying to look online for ways you could find to 
clean these and make them bright again. And I think after a couple years, they might seem pretty gross. So having a dark color seatbelt, although not as fun, might be more practical in the long run. This car also is relatively tight left to right. It feels better now that I've got the seat adjusted. My knee is now below this little build out. So it's relatively comfortable. On the outside, this car reminds me a lot of a Dodge Charger. I know it's not exactly the same, but that's the vibe I get. And so I think it has good styling and might be really good for people in the market for a sedan, or if you're not trying to haul the family around, I think the Volvo is a better option for that. The seats in the back are decent size, but there's not a lot of room. A lot of room is taken up by this console and the vehicle isn't terribly wide. Now, if you want something sporty and fun, this is probably, you know, just what you want. Nice that as we get in, we see an option for maps and some quick basics there. Uh, we see our range displayed and we can get more details on that. So instead of the row of buttons here, we, we do have some here, but they're not as pronounced as the Volvo. Obviously we could connect our phone if we had the app. Radio station and maps. Let's just do the same thing we were doing in the Volvo and say, hey Google, navigate to Duluth. Okay, Duluth, here we go. So pretty responsive. And it's saying we'll have 0% on arrival. Same. So here it's giving us some better options for charging. Where it's saying if we stop at North Branch, it's going to take three hours to charge. Slow, and it actually does say fast or slow. So we're going to want a fast charge of 40 minutes at number one, which is Sturgeon Lake. So let's add that. So it's now 1.30. It's saying we would drive, we would arrive at Sturgeon Lake at that charger with 17%. At 3.09, charge for 40 minutes, and then get to Duluth. So not a super fast charge if it's gonna take 40 minutes. And this battery isn't too big, but that's, again, more of an indictment of Minnesota's not great infrastructure for CCS right now than an indictment of how the car would behave. So I'm going to cancel that route. We're just going to do our same loop we just did. One pedal driving. We want creep off. Standard one pedal driving. Sport mode. Uh, we'll do standard feel. eighty two percent but the battery is cold we've got a little snowflake there what's really nice about this interface and I think more so than the Volvo is a lot of this is super intuitive where I haven't had to wonder what I'm going to find in each place so here's the screen in front of me very similar map we don't have those things on the side say showing regen and not I imagine that'll show up in the little battery section. We've got 82%, but we do have a little snowflake icon on the battery. And I'm guessing that's kind of what that shaded part is showing us. That's good to know that it is, it recognizes that it is cold. Backup camera, very similar to the So if you can hear that beeping, that is the car in reverse. So let's hit the road and see what this is like. The hood slopes down where you can't see it, which is fine. I've had other vehicles like that. Um, but you do have to get a, you do have to get used to having a good idea of where that that hood is. Nice punch. Accelerating, really nice, sporty. This definitely feels tougher, a little rougher ride, but you, you don't feel the float of the Volvo as much. 
again, they're built to be different types of cars for different uses. So that's not a knock on either one. That's just the way it is. The side mirrors are frameless, which is kind of cool, a little odd, but kind of cool that you just see what you see. There's no border around it. It does absorb the potholes all right. I would say it feels pretty similar to my Model Y, where they don't disappear, but it's not jarring. A little strange on the turn signal noise. It almost sounds like um, somebody flicking the speaker, or it's uh, kind of like a little, a uh, little dot of blown out speaker sound. Uh, obviously that's not what it is, it's just the, the choice they made on the on the sound, but kind of interesting. It's pretty comfortable. Like I said, it, it feels sporty. I don't know. There seems to be enough padding. I was going to say I don't know how, long, how it would be on a long road trip, but I think if you dialed in the seat to your exact you know, position how you like it. I think it would be pretty good. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that turn signal sound. I feel like that could get a little bit annoying. A nice power delivery curve where it's not quite as poppy as other cars, but I think if you're coming from a gas car, this is going to feel like that, only with more power. Nice 360 camera in traffic. Obviously things are a little distorted, but you can see where you are in space. Sound system's pretty good. I don't know if it's anything I'd really write home about. I'd have to try more songs than the time I have allowed here. As I took off from that last stoplight, I noticed something earlier, I was comparing this to a, like a Dodge Charger kind of, and it kind of gave me that, that combustion engine feel of like the back going down, the top going up as we started accelerating. Um, so I want to get to another stoplight and try that again and see what that experience is like one more time. Comfortable, relatively quiet. Again, I'm hearing other vehicles more than wind noise. It's interesting that they have vents up here. I'm not sure how effective that is. They don't flex a whole lot. So they, that seems a little vestigial. Do so you turn and then... Yeah, you kind of... When you hit the accelerator, it doesn't kick in, the heavy acceleration doesn't kick in until about halfway through, through, through the pedal. And then when it does, you do kind of get that, you know, you almost expect to hear the engine noise. So if you're coming from a gas sports car, you're probably going to really love that. And again, last night, just getting in and out of it, it feels pretty tight, and when I was sitting here with the door open, I was feeling like you'd feel really kind of squished in here, and in the back seat, I felt like this was really close to my head, which it obviously still will be. But once the seat's in, in a good position for you in the driver's seat, it feels relatively spacious. This is a little close, uh, but it's a nice armrest. So it's not a problem. It just it feels like you're tighter on that side and you've got more space hanging out over there. So now we're going to take that entrance ramp again. And I'm going to leave a little space so I have some acceleration room here. Yeah, it feels really nice and planted. It's giving me kind of Model 3 vibes.
like the attack on the acceleration isn't quite as hard. But there's plenty of acceleration there. Again, easy to get up to highway speeds. So I wonder if that center map is a setting. Because it's very similar to the Volvo center map. But that one wasn't following me, so I may just not have had something pressed there. Yeah, turn signal noise is a bummer. There seems to be more range in the regen than the Volvo had. Where you coast a little bit more. Before the hard re regen kicks in, and that's going to be a personal taste, you know, whether you like that or not. You can easily get up to highway speeds without any worries. Through turns, I'm not quite sure how to describe this. It seems very direct, and it's going to go exactly where you have it pointed, which is good, but it also doesn't quite, I can't say the turns are less fun, but they feel a little, uh, at low speeds they're fun. At high speeds, it feels almost slot car-y in that it's not going to feather its way one way or another. It's just going to go exactly in that direction. And again, that's going to be a personal style, so you know, obviously if you're in the market for this car, test drive it and see what you think yourself. So comfortable, stylish, sporty. The only negatives about it I can really find are it might be a little too small for some people or, you know, families or things like that. And that annoying turn signal sound. In Minnesota, we have the problem of not a great, robust CCS charging infrastructure. So that's a consideration in Minnesota, in the Dakotas. In a lot of the country or other places with great CCS networks, this is a really enjoyable car to drive. Now, I'd love to have this car for a weekend and give it a really good range test, take it over to the Electrify America station and really give it a shakedown test all the driver assistant features. I don't have time for that right now. First impression of the vehicle driving it and uh, it's it's better than I expected. I, I thought it would feel too cramped and really once you're in it and in a in a driving position it's pretty comfortable and can do a lot of the sporty things. Another thing I like about these vehicles is the top of the window has a frame and so that just gives a little more solid material there. I think it gives the door a little better closure and might be something that's helping with the uh, sound be nice and quiet in here. Before I left, I was also able to park my car, a Tesla Model Y, in between a Polestar 2 and the Volvo XC40 Recharge to get a sense of the size. The Polestar 2 is definitely closer to the Tesla Model 3. It might be a hair taller, but probably not as wide or as long. And here you can see I've got the back of the Volvo and the Tesla almost lined up pretty close there. And you can see the Polestar 2 is shorter, but that's more of a sedan style. But with the backs pretty much lined up, you can see how much longer the Tesla is. I would say it's almost nearly a foot longer and considerably wider. As we back out here, we can see the Volvo XC40 recharge next to the Tesla. Tesla is wider and longer, but the height is very similar. The XC40 might be a hair taller. It looks taller because of the roof rails, but actual body structure, they are very close. And here you can see the difference in wheelbase too. But now let's take a quick look at some of the stats and prices. And again, I hope to do a deeper dive, more involved testing of each of these vehicles in the future. But this is kind of a first look where I'm just jumping in the cars and going and seeing how they feel.
And we'll take a quick look at the website for each of these vehicles just to give you a sense of things, but obviously going there yourself and specking vehicles how you would like to will give you a much better picture. We are fortunate in Minnesota that we are the only upper Midwest Polestar location, and they do have some inventory of 2021 and 2022 models. Now you can spec the very base single motor version, and that starts at 45,900, but there will probably be a weight on that. Add 4,000 and you can get the long range dual motor all wheel drive. Showing some of the specifications here, range up to 249 miles EPA. You can add features, the pilot feature, the plus feature with the heat pump, premium sound, extra illumination, some other features there, our performance pack. So once you add all those, you're closer to $60,000. And you can also spec up other colors, which can bring the price up a little bit too. Both Polestar and Volvo are eligible for the $7,500 tax credit, which wouldn't come off your sale price, but if you owed more than that in taxes, you could take that amount as a deduction next tax season. Now the incentives might be changing in the next year or so, so keep an eye on that and make sure you know what you're getting into before you count on something. Volvo is set up far more like a traditional automaker, obviously, and so there's some information, some basics on the Volvo website, but really they want you to be visiting the dealership and specking these things out through them. So it's a little less of an online process, but both of these in the end do go through dealers. And it can be a little confusing because there are several variations and Volvo does offer some plug-in hybrids as well on their bigger vehicles the XC60 and XC90 and the XC40 recharge starts at $55,300 but of course you can add stuff and make that go up from there and that gets you 223 miles of EPA rated range and we also see 402 horsepower all-wheel drive acceleration 0 to 60 is 4.7 seconds and then a little bit about home charging and charging on the go. But of course, that'll all depend on your situation and chargers around you. And then some stats that are just the bare bones information about the size and structure of the vehicle. But when it comes down to actually configuring your vehicle with the dealership, any modifications, additions, or changes you make will be on top of that. And you'll do that with your dealer. So hopefully you like that first look of the Polestar 2 and the Volvo XC40 Recharge. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. But thanks a lot for hanging out with me today. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.